coming to you live from heaven's number one source of news, the Faith News Network. as we cover God's gift of faith throughout the ages. Coming to you live on FNM, heaven's streets of gold. Headlines ripped from history, stories new and old. Gate Plaza, it's your hosts, Cameron Flowers and Summer Showers. Good morning to all of the heavenly hosts. It's another beautiful day here at the Pearly Gates. We're so glad you can join us for Faith News today. As you know, we shine a big golden spotlight on God's people, those who trust him and his promises. It's always an honor to sit here next to my co-host, Summer Showers. And may I just say, you have a brilliant new gold spun hairdo today. Thank you, Seaflo. I have to admit, I peeked at the lineup we have for today, and it's Halo-tastic. With that, let's go to our roving angel reporters on the ground, Sarah Fim and Cherubim. Heavenly morning, Cameron and Summer. We are here in Israel where everyone is abuzz about the subject of our faith news feature this morning. That's right. What the people are saying around here is that Noah has been building a very large boat for decades. And if you know the dry weather around here, you know, that's pretty weird. Let's get it straight from his wife, Mrs. Noah. Hello? Just speaking to the microphone here. That gold stick. Yes, the gold stick. So, can you tell us a little about what is going on with your husband Noah? If you're going to make fun of him, too, I'm not going to. Oh, no. We are very interested in the construction project going on here. Oh, in that case, years and years ago, Noah told me that God said he should build a very big boat. An ark. An ark. You've heard of it? And, of course, I told him it's going to be expensive. I'd imagine so. You have no idea. So he builds the boat, I think. What do I care? He has a hobby. Then he says he wants to put animals in it. But get this, not just the animals we own. He wants to put two of every animal on the boat. That's a lot of animals. Clean up and out five. Exactly. So guess what I've been doing for the past year? Starting our own zoo. But don't think I'm complaining, mind you. All God's creatures are valuable, and I don't want to be... This is Noah. I don't mean to interrupt, but do you think that you could get your husband to come over? Sure, I gotta go feed the camels and giraffes anyways. Hey, Noah! 
Come meet my new friends. They're uh, not making fun of us like everyone else. They're actually interested in what God has to say. Well, you know. Talking to the golden stick, honey. <laughs> I've learned that when God tells me something, I should obey. He's never given me a reason to doubt him. And if God says, it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain. When God told Noah there was gonna be a flood, there was a little hot to stomach. Since it's so dry, you never seen mud, but I stood by. Understand until I told them and heard them say, If I see it, I see it is believing, then I believe it, cause see it is believing. You're talking crazy. We're living in a desert, so grab some sunscreen, pack some sand into Noah. It's crazy to believe. see it did rain Noah's neighbors are in for a big surprise and that brings us to the weather forecast with our own Sally Soaker thank you Seaflow yes as you just saw it is currently raining in Noah's neighborhood meanwhile in the desert between Elam and Sinai man and quill are falling from the sky that's right God is providing for his hungry people by actually making the food fall from the sky. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'm always excited to see what God does next. Of course, in the desert it is hot, hot, hot. Not a drop of rain there. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Now, let's go to commercial. Just kidding. Everyone knows there are no commercials in heaven. <laughs> Wasn't it amazing to see the faith of Noah, especially when the skies were clear and it didn't seem like it would ever rain? You know, oh, sometimes having faith means that you are certain that what God says is true, even though you can't see it. Let's go down to Chera and Sarah, reporting in Susa. Thank you, Seaflow. We're here on the ground in the Persian capital of Susa, talking with Queen Esther, who has quite a story to tell. Our sage says, Queen, can you give our heavenly viewers a little 
background on your story? Uh, viewers? Never mind. Okay, well, the king had been searching for a new queen, and he brought a bunch of us to let the palace, where they pampered us with spa treatments almost every day for a year. It was quite luxurious. I should say so. And then, can you believe, out of all those girls, the king picked me to be his queen? That's quite an honor. But I understand you are facing what could be a life or death situation. Can you tell us more? Before I became queen, my cousin Mordecai made me promise not to tell anyone that I'm a Hebrew. But now there's a horrible man named Haman working for the king who wants to kill all the Jewish people. Unbelievable. Can't you talk to the king about it? We have very specific laws here. Even as queen, I'm not allowed to go see the king unless he invites me. Anyone who goes in to see the king without an invitation could be killed. Mercy. We've all been fasting and praying to God. Honestly, it's a pretty scary decision. The Mordecai says that this may even be the reason I became queen for this very moment. Lord, I'm frightened. I want to hide this book. 